Hello everyone. Corel Video Studio's motion tracker is capable of doing a pretty good job, provided you apply it correctly. This video was created with the intentions of giving you the basics on how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this clip. I'm going to come over here to the motion tracking icon and apply motion tracking. This is going to open up the motion tracking interface. You see this orange bar down here? This is how much of the clip is actually on the timeline in Corel. It was trimmed down to 30 seconds. The clip itself is almost two minutes long. That's why you see this long timeline, but it was trimmed down to 30 seconds. So that's why it looks like this. I'm going to zoom into the timeline right now. I'm going to pause the video. The video now fills the timeline. Down here, it says tracker one. Okay, when you first open the interface, a tracker is automatically assigned. Down here, you can, with the plus button, you can apply new trackers. You can actually apply several trackers to the same video. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assign a tracker to a taillight of this car. First, I'm going to show you how to do it the wrong way. The first thing you do is grab this point. The magnifier shows you, okay, what you want to do is you want to grab a high contrast area, which would be a dark area. Okay, let go once you've done that. Then you want to come down here, okay. It said set tracker as area, you click on this. Now what you don't want to do is make this area too large. Okay, what this is doing now is it's sampling an area outside of the car. All this area out here, it's trying to read this area and all around it. And as soon as I start tracking, watch how fast it loses track of the car. Okay, tracking, and already it's let go of the car. Okay, the tracking has gone awry. Now it's off in the parking lot. It's just, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible track. Okay, now what do you do if the tracking is bad? You come down here, see this little stopwatch? That resets all tracking. All tracking information is gone. Okay, now let's come up here. Well, turn on, turn on tracker type, set tracking point. Bring this back to the exact same place. Nice little dark area. Now, bring this down to a smaller area. Don't make it too tiny, but keep it on the gray of the car, the tail light. You want to track a small area. You don't want to make it too small. You want to sample around the tail light a little bit, but you don't want to be sampling the parking lots and the, and the yellow paint in the road. You want to track a fairly small area. Now, when you track, See how nicely it's sticking with the car all around the corner? Okay, and at that point it is lost. It has lost track of the car. Well, if I back this up to the point that it let go, It kept track of the car for 11 seconds and 25 frames. That's pretty darn good. Okay. Now, if you come down here to the timeline, see this hide tracking path? I'm going to turn on the tracking path. Okay. This is the actual path that this dot is following. You see these jumps here? That's the jumps of the cars behind it, camera, and the car jumping. Okay. This, this is a pretty jagged path. For this motion tracker to follow, I mean for the for an inexpensive program like Corel to have a motion tracker that can actually follow these jumpy of a paths without losing without losing the path is actually fairly impressive. I mean, you know, this is not Mocha tracking or After Effects tracking. Okay, these programs would stick with it right around the corner and not lose it at all. Okay, these are different, you know, those are different programs altogether. I mean, you have to set your expectations. 
you know, within reason, you, you know, you can't expect a hundred dollar Corel to do as well as After Effects and Mocha, you know, pro plugins, but it's all about tracking your object properly. So that's really what all you need to know about how to track properly is how to set the tracking properly and you can have some pretty good success okay even when the motion path does drop off if you go about it correctly you can create several motion paths and string them all together for a seamless long motion path I intend on making a video of that in the near future that's all I really wanted to cover in this video and I hope this helps you out and uh, that is all